I want to thank you all for having me here. And uh, this is going to be kind of, I'm just going to be real with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. I feel like this is family. I'm going to share some testimony and I'm going to share some music. And I'll talk and then I'll play and sing and we can sing one together. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to tell you a story as I'm sitting here and worshiping with you. I wasn't raised Baptist. I was actually a Catholic. Oh, goodness. <laughs> My father was the first black newspaper reporter for the St. Louis Post-Dispatch in 1949. When President Kennedy got an office, our family became in the Foreign Service. We moved to Germany. And I was an altar boy and, uh, in the Catholic Church. And then years, years, years later, when I got ready to come to Boston to go to college, I was visiting the Abernathy family in Atlanta, Georgia. My parents had split. And I was having dinner with Ralph Abernathy and Mrs. Abernathy and their daughter, who was also going to college to study music. And I was going to Boston. And so I was playing some classical music. And Mrs. Abernathy said, boy, that's good. Don't you know gospel music? No, 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 gospel. I said, no, ma'am, I don't know any. I don't know, you know. So she kind of whacked me on the back, and I can still feel it. <laughs> she says, when you go to Boston, I want you to look up Union United Methodist Church. It's the big black church in Boston. You go there, you learn some gospel. You hear? I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> she said, if you can't remember the name of the church, just remember it's the big black church. So I came to Boston. I couldn't remember the name of the church, and I asked a taxi driver to take me to the big black church. <laughs> this was in 1972. He said, you mean the big black church? I said, yes, sir, the big black church. You mean the big one? I said, yeah, the big one. So he took me to 12th Baptist Church in Rockford. <laughs> and that's how I became a Baptist. The, the music just kind of grabbed me, and I just gravitated to the service and the worship experience. And ever since then, I just, I, I never looked back. I became a Baptist. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. So I'm, I'm, I'm here with a lot of joy. I'm very excited to be here. But the reason I share that story is because a couple years later, I left 12th Baptist in Roxbury, and I joined a church in Melrose. And looking at some of your faces, some of you remind me of that experience. That first time I came to Melrose in 1974. And I'll tell you why. Because you have the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. I can see his love in your faces. I can see his love in your faces. And one family in particular reached out to me and called me their son. And they made a big difference in my life. Oh, yeah, I've strayed away. All of us make mistakes in life. But the seed that they planted Amen. will never die. Amen. The seed that they planted was enough of a seed in Jesus Christ that led me back when I strayed. How many of you have ever strayed away? Amen. 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 <laughs> Disobey the Lord. You know, yeah. you need to forgive that person. I ain't forgiving them. I'm not going to do nothing. No, 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 no. Yes, God wants us to love and forgive. Well, this family loved me like their own son. And you talk about a white and black uh, love, son, parent relationship. It was the strangest thing. They used to have always summer in May. And one summer they took me to May. And Dad was having a haircut. And Mom said, go get Dad. So I went into the barber shop. I said, Dad, Mom's looking for you. And the barber almost slipped his <laughs> I said, yeah, that's, that's, my, that's my dad, you know. All I'm saying, I'm saying a couple of stories. I want to be a little funny, but I want to just share one of the things that, uh, that I'm feeling the Holy Spirit leading me to do this morning is just to say to you, let that, that song we sang, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I want to just encourage you as we approach Christ this season of Christmas time. Let your light shine. Every one of you can make a difference in someone else's life. Mm -hmm. I'll share. And so they made a difference in my life. They just like, I don't know, I mean, 
we couldn't have been more different. I, I was raised Democrat, they were Republicans, <laughs> you know? I mean, <laughs> I mean, we could have been more different, but the love of Jesus Christ made a difference in my, where I would have hated people, all of a sudden I felt love and forgiveness for people. Amen. 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 If we had more of them in Ferguson, Missouri, we wouldn't Amen. have all this mess. Amen. Amen. It's the love of Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, Pastor. I'm preaching now. I'm feeling oh, like this is good. <laughs> I love this man. You all support him. He's a good man. Amen. 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 Let him know that you love him. <laughs> Let him know in, in, in tangible ways. Amen. <laughs> all right? He didn't ask me to say that. I'm just, I'm being real. I said, I'm going to be real. Don't just say, I'll pray for you. No, no, no. Show it. Show it. Amen. And so, I'm just here to share with you one thing. If, it, if there's anything, when, when Jesus was hanging on the cross and he looked at Mary, his mother, and he looked at John, his disciple, and he said, woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. And the Bible says from that moment, he took her into his own home and loved her as though she was his own mother. Amen. And that's what this family did for me. As I'm looking at your faces, I'm feeling this, this I want to cry. They're all gone. They've, they've, they've all gone to glory. Yeah. I mean, they've gone. They've, been, they've, they've departed and gone to heaven years and decades ago. Mm -hmm. But the love that they gave me, mm -hmm. I, I, I'll hold on to that for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And they would, they would feed me. They took me into their room and let me stay up in the in the in, in Peter's room, their son, who had left. And I, that was my room. And they loved me and I loved them. And they and we became family. Everybody would prefer to, oh yeah, that's their son Jeff. He, he's a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm looking at you, I'm telling you, I can sense the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ in your spirits, Amen. in your heart, in your faces. And I'm here to just say to you, if anything, you belong to Jesus Christ, Jesus belongs to you, and let his love fill you and share it with someone. You know the song, a bell is not a bell until you ring it. A song is not a song until you sing it. The love that's in your heart was not put there to stay. For love isn't love until you give it away. Amen. Amen. Give it away. Keep giving it. And keep I know you're giving it because you're here. So you love the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to share one other story real quick before I do some music. My brother passed away. He was a reporter for the New York Times. He wrote for the New York Times for 27 years. He's a great reporter. He knew everybody. Church was packed a few weeks ago in New York City. And so a congressman got up, a state representative in New York, and he said, I, I, I remember Jonathan Hicks. I want to tell you a story about Jonathan Hicks. I was with him one day when he stopped this 18-year-old boy. And he said, young man, what, what, what's, your, what's your plan in five years from now? What's your plan? What do you plan to do with your life? And the young man said, well, you know, I'm 18. I don't know. I mean, my, I got a girlfriend. She's pregnant. You know, I don't know what I'm going to do. He said, well, you need to go to school. We need to help you get in school. We need to help you figure out where you're going in your life. And he said that. So that Jonathan Hicks helped me get enrolled in college. He said, years later, that same young man became a state representative for the city of New York. He says, I know because I'm that person. Mm -hmm. He impacted my life with just that one encounter. What's your five-year plan? And I'm telling you, think out of the box. Don't think in the box anymore. If this Christmas is anything special, get out of the box. And reach out to somebody who you may never have talked to in your whole life. Amen. I don't care what color they are. I don't care how old they are. They could be, they, they, they could be, they could be 105. Methuselah. Amen. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you reach out to them and you let the love of Jesus Christ touch them like that family did for me. It doesn't, you know, we're so, we don't have to categorize anymore. I mean, you know, we're all related. We're all going to see each other in heaven one day, you know, but God wants us to reach out. And so I want to just share, I'm going to do a little singing here. And one song that I wrote, 
I wrote this song while I was working on my, my uh, dissertation at Gordon Conwell. The song called Worship the Lord. I love the Bible. I love the word of God. And in Psalm 29, it says, Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness, in the splendor of holiness. Amen. Amen. Ascribe unto the Lord the glory due his name. So this is called Worship the Lord. And I guess I'll start with this one. say something else as we approach this season because uh, I talked to you know I have uh, I have kids and they're all grown it's the weirdest thing you know <laughs> you know they, they, they tell you what you're supposed to do now you know they <laughs> you know no dad you don't need to do that don't wait, wait a minute I raised you Tell me what time I need to go to bed. What, what, what's this? You know, Dad, you need to get ready. You know, do anything else. Wow. Okay. All right. Yes. Yes, sir. You know. I mean, it's it's, it's just so weird. You know. So uh, I I I, I um, uh, you know I play jazz as well. Uh, I play um, I play jazz and I play gospel and I study classical music and and uh, so this uh, this next song is kind of like a jazz gospel. And, and I love you all, so I figure I can get away with it today. Amen? Is, is that okay? It's from the book of Philippians. It's based on <laughs> Philippians 4, where he says, Whatever is true, whatever is lovely, whatever, whatever is gracious in your sight, you think on these things. And if you see anything in me, the, you know, just follow my ways. It's, it's Philippians. So it's, the, the title of the song is Whatever is True. And um, I'll just tell you that even though some of my family likes it, my uncle, my uncle can't stand this song. He says it's too jazzy. So, uh, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I'm not. I'm doing it for the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
So if, how many of you like jazz? I want to kind of get an idea. Okay, all right. So I got half people who kind of be with me on this one. But Jeffrey, does this, what, what about your kids? Do they like it? Cause you... They, they're back and forth. They, oh. they, they kind of, you know, they, uh, they want me to be more traditional too. You know, it's weird. It's, you know, kids are something, but they're, they're, they're grown. I mean, it's like, I want, I want to tell them what to do. They, you know, so at any rate, I'm learning. It's almost like you have to study now how to treat adult children. You know, it's like a whole, you know, amen, <laughs> amen is right. All right, so this is called Whatever is True. in the mail. See John List.
this is an old, old gospel tune I used to do, and I'm sharing this. It was written by Doris Akers. Joys are flowing like a river since the comforter has come. He abides with us forever, makes the trusting heart his own. Blessed quietness, holy quietness, what assurance in my soul. On a stormy sea, Jesus speaks to me. How the billows cease to roll. Amen. My aunt and I used to do this years ago. She was, she was a pistol. She was just, she was a mess. And I've told this story before. I don't think I've ever told it here. But, uh, my, you know, I didn't learn how to drive a car until I was like maybe 26. Because a friend of mine in high school had a terrible accident. And when I went to see him in the hospital, I was just so scared. I mean, I just, he was, he was all cut up. And I said, I never want to drive. I, I, I'm going to hire me a chauffeur or something. Do something. <laughs> take the tea, you know. But, so my aunt took me to drive. Get my, she took me in her car. And she was, real, she was a Pentecostal Baptist. So she took me in her car to, to uh, get my, my, uh, my license, the driving test, you know. And so the guy said, all right. So she sat in the back seat, and I'm driving. He's over here. And he said, okay, make a left turn. She said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I want you to help my nephew make the left turn the right way in the name of Jesus. And the guy, he's looking like, ma'am, could you like, you know. He said, okay, I want you to make a three-point turn. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I want you to help Jeffrey make a three-point turn. Please anoint him. Anoint his hands in the name of Jesus. Please help him make a three-point turn in Jesus' name. The man looked over at me. He said, look, you got your license. Just go. Just go. <laughs> so that does. <laughs> That's a true story. My aunt was a pistol man. I was like, Auntie, thank you so much. I didn't, I didn't even have to park the car. You know, I didn't, I didn't have to do nothing. You know. So this is a song called. <laughs> oh man, God rest her soul. I'm telling. This is blessed quiet. When some people, you know, I lost my son, uh, my son Josh, my beloved first 
son, uh, firstborn son, he was studying to be a priest. And uh, he was 27. He, passed, he, had, he had suffered all his life, okay? And um, uh, I'll just share with you in 30 seconds or less. When he was still in the womb, I prayed about what to name this baby. I thought it was going to be a girl. <laughs> and so I prayed, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, his name is Joshua. So I was, I mean, I don't know if any of you have ever had an experience like where you feel the Lord is telling you something, but it was clear to me that he was saying his name is, not will be, is Joshua. So I named him Joshua, and he was the only one of my four children that suffered all his life, chronic asthma, this, eczema, you know, allergies, this, that, and the other, but he loved the Lord. Through all the suffering, I don't think there was a year of his life he wasn't at, in hospitals, but he loved the Lord. And, uh, and the reason I mentioned him, it, it juxtaposed with my aunt, <laughs> the two of them were the, the, the most laughingest people. I don't know if there's a word, laughing. I mean, they, my son just, every time I think of him, even though I miss him and, you know, uh, I mean, the Lord had prepared me because he had been, you know, he had actually died once when he was 11. But the Lord prepared me for his death, even though it's never really expected, you know. Uh, but the thing that gives me peace is how much he laughed and how much my aunt laughed. And I share that with you to say that people are touched. You'd be, you'd be surprised. I'm, I'm challenging you. All of you First Baptist Church of Needham people, smile with somebody. Just, just give somebody a smile. Amen. Just a smile, just a, a handshake, just a hug, just a smile, and let them know that you appreciate them. That would just be like heaven for somebody. There's so many homeless people, so many hurting people in this world today. And just a smile where somebody shows that they accept you, that they, they're accepted. I think it's really important. Amen? Amen. Um, I'm going to do two more songs. I think I'm, I'm kind of, I want to do a, a song that uh, is kind of my testimony. Uh, <clears throat> It was written by Andre Crouch. It's called Through It All. And the words are just so powerful. Through it all. The good times and the bad times. Every one of us is going to be some rain that falls on our lives. But through it all, we can learn to trust in Jesus. No matter what. We don't thank God for the, the bad times. But we can thank God through the bad times. Every Amen. Through it all. I've had many tears and sorrows I've had questions for tomorrow There have been times I didn't know right from wrong But in every situation God gave me a blessed consolation That my trials only make me strong
I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely? Long for heaven at home. to just say again how grateful I am for your warm reception and love and pastor uh, John uh, having me here today I, I hope that something said something shared has been helpful to you Amen? Amen uh, Maybe a little bit, just a little bit. And I want to close, you know, you said you didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to expect either, I'm going to tell you. Uh, uh, I just, I try to go with, uh, with what I feel the Holy Spirit wants. I made a recommitment of my life to Jesus Christ 10 years ago. I was doing all kinds of things back in the day. You know, as a, when you're a jazz musician and you travel all over the world and, 
Everybody butters you up with how wonderful you play the piano. You're so good. And when you start believing all that, you're in trouble. <laughs> Amen? I won a Steinway piano competition when I was 14 in Germany. But that was then. <laughs> that was then. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm 60 years old and proud of it. Praise God. And I'm so thankful that I have Kathy in my life. We, we're, we're going on. I believe that life begins when you're 50. Amen. That's what I believe. Because we've been married now eight years. And, you know, like everybody, we go through changes. But, but we, we still, the honeymoon is still going on. And I, I'm thankful to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Watch it there, Liz. Be quiet. All right. Um, but, you know, I would say this to all of you. God loves you. God loves you with an everlasting and amazing love. Amen. 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 And he said, you know, for, for as high as the, the heavens are above the earth. You know, that's how, how much he loves us. And, and, you know, as far as the east is from the west, that's as far as he's moved our transgressions. When you confess your sins and tell him you're sorry and you repent... That's when I changed. Amen. When I re There's a difference between regret and repent. Mm -hmm. Okay, we regret, you know, because we've been found out. But when we <laughs> repent, we repent because there's been a change Amen. in our spirit. And so this song is a song that I wrote. When I made that repentance, it's called Jesus, I Love You. Yeah.